everybody, this is Oliver Hines, aka Diamond Nelson at Underground.com, and it's indeed an honor to stay with Patrick for Pestilence. How's it going, bro? Very good, man. Good, good, good. Thanks for having us. Thanks for coming. Um, so, we'll get straight into it. The, um, still kind of promoting the new album, Hey Deal, came out last year, um, which is the first album for, I think, five years now? Yeah. So, mm -hmm. How was the um, response to it overall, would you say? Uh, I would say that everybody was very surprised because we kind of uh, looked back, back at our discography and then f just started thinking and brainstorming about what the fans would like to hear mm. instead of just making music that we like to hear ourselves. It's always very difficult to find that fine line because Pestilence has always been a band that, well, I always try to be uh, to, to innovate, to do something else yeah. and just like the, you know, the more the, the more regular uh, stuff that's out there. And, uh, but now we have all these subdivisions, uh, new, yeah, new bands. So, oh, I mean, it's just like, I can't even keep track, you know. For me, it's like I don't even listen to, to, to all these bands anymore because I can't keep up with it, you know. Yeah. All these new styles. You know, Davis, someone's coming. <laughs> Her about that. <laughs> uh, you know all these styles and uh, pestilence has always uh, continued their own you know their own vision and just you know whatever and then we realized that you know people are always talking about consuming impulse and testimony of the ancients they don't talk about obsideo or, or doctrine which I think and even resurrection macabre are outstanding albums uh, not because I made those songs it's just like a natural progression of stuff that I've done in the past, mm. and um, but it seems that people get like kind of stuck in time as well. They have these special feelings of when they grew up and on, on consuming impulse when they were young kids, yeah. And then they, they have this special feeling when they listen to the album, it brings them back, you know, the memories of growing up, I guess. So we figured, why why don't we do an album that kind of reminds them of that era, uh, put it in. Uh, in, uh, in a, in a modern, more modern jacket, and then uh, there you got it. So, so Hedion is more of a continuum of testimony uh, of the ancients. Okay. And um, I mean, I love the album. But I think it didn't get, and that's the problem. Always has been the problem with Pestilence. Uh, it doesn't get the promotion that it deserves. Mm. So maybe with uh, more major um, record companies that can push uh, push albums. Um, like to do with other albums. Um, we could have been bigger. Hmm. And also I think that, um, you know, when we started, uh, we were the European answer to death. Hmm. So there's no death anymore. So it's more, now more difficult to co compare yourself to, to, somebody to, else. Yeah, to somebody else. Because, you know, we're not Cannibal Corpse. We're not DSI. We're not, all these names, right? We're not, we're not that. So I don't feel that there's, any challenges, but the challenge I, I give to myself is always try to be innovative and, and come up with different uh, ideas within the style. Yeah. So, so um, to make an, a, a, a long answer short, I think Helion could have been um, bigger if the um, if a record company would have put much more um, time and money and promotion into it. Okay. Yeah. It's interesting you uh, made the comparisons to first year because uh, I think you can definitely hear parts of Obsidia when um, your album, um, especially, uh, well, musically, really. Oh, I, I know on this album there's less of the progressive elements than um, the previous albums, including Obsidia. Um, but I did have know somewhere about it being kind of a successor to Obsidia. Well, you know, the thing is that um, I always try to use elements that I've done uh, before, mm -hmm. not to um, uh, strange people of, of the pestilence uh, style. So, with me not listening to other metal uh, that much, I don't get influenced. So, it's always pure pestilence music. So, whenever an album comes by or you hear a certain song, you automatically hear it's pestilence. Mm -hmm. um, like I said, every album kind of has a different flavor, different vocals. I'm not one of those guys that 
always comes up with the same growl, you know, and it's just like, oh, it, for me it gets really boring if it's always the same. Yeah. But I have a feeling that a lot of the fans do want that. They want that continuum going. I mean, look at Cannibal Corpse, uh, look at Obituary. All these bands haven't changed one bit, no. yet they're very successful. So that means that it has something to do with, with keeping uh, the style pure and true. Yeah. But for me, I like to progress a little bit more than just... I mean, that makes it more interesting. It makes it more interesting also for me, but that's also a risk. Because if you try to do something else, uh, there might be a risk that the fans don't want to pick it up anymore. Yeah, I guess uh, so. so. So that's that's difficult, you know. And the record companies they are very sensitive to those those album sales, mm -hmm. uh, since there's no no money to be made with album sales anymore. So they're very particular uh, with you know people are in uh, record companies. They're a little bit scared of us because. Uh, What's he gonna do next? Yeah. Is it marketable? Can we do something with it? You know, and and Hey Dion was such a such a perfect album uh, for for me to continue, and yet it's not in the you know top ten or something, which I don't understand. There are all these other bands out there that I think they were born with Pro Tools or Cubase, where um, making a song is like putting 30, 40 riffs. Uh, as at, at hyper speeds and they like a technique, they like of understanding of the instrument itself. So they depend on technology to to fix that for them. Yeah, I don't even think that some of these guys can play what they what they actually put on the album. Probably not. Yeah, so that's I think that's a that's a that's a bad that's a bad side effect of of technology. But it's the same with this thing, man. Look at the kids, man. They, they the only thing they do is this. This they don't even fucking climb trees anymore. You know, and so times has have have changed and I understand that it's for music it's pretty much the pretty much the same. Uh, luckily uh, I can still make a living. Yeah. Finally <laughs> make a living of, of just getting my music across. Yeah. And uh, I'm not the youngest anymore so I gotta be quick with this stuff. Oh, but you're in better shape than I am. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I do have to sacrifice a lot of, uh, uh, you know, the pleasures of life, yeah. whatever. Uh, you know, I don't drink, I don't do drugs, I don't do, I don't smoke, none of that stuff. I just go to gym seven days a week, and that's my, that's my high, you know. Yeah. And then after that, I'm, I'm, I'm drained of my energy, and then my head is clear, and I can start working on riffs and, and music. So that's how I roll. Yeah, why not? Um, one thing I really like about the album is the artwork, and uh, again, that in itself is is quite similar in some respects to previous um, yes. album work, especially um, the first album that steers. There's again, it's not a copy or anything like that, but it's yeah. linked. It's linked. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think I think it's uh, uh, you know, there's a couple of things in in uh, in the metal scene in general that people uh, have high you know, in regards to that it's something that they really want. The album cover needs to be good. Yes. If the album cover sucks, then probably the music will suck too. So they have this pre-programmed, and then we know this, so we have to always come up with something that is special, that fits with pestilence. That's why we always keep the mechanical ball yes. in there. That's our, that's our symbol. And uh, I, I am thinking uh, for the next album, uh, which is going to happen in 2020. Uh, not to use the name Pestles anymore, but just have the mechanical ball. Everybody knows the mechanical ball. Well, this, that's Pestles right there. Yeah. So it's, it has become such a strong symbol for us as well. You know, a circle is, is never ending. It's a continuum. So I, I like to continue in my, my, my course of what I think is, uh, is interesting enough to, to, uh, you know, to, to give the people uh, I listen to yeah, absolutely. Um, it's, I think it's also a sign of um, Pestilence as a band in new ways of, uh, like you say, you like to experiment, and progress by nature. The, your um, your recognizable feature, if you like, is the the circle, whereas other bands are using skeletons, and yeah, zombies, and whatever yeah. else. Yeah. yeah. So it's a sign then that when you're buying a Pestilence record. That you're getting a little bit more than the average. Yeah, yeah. Not to um, 
Yeah, I mean, you know, again, there's a fine line, uh, um, and it's very difficult to to move in that box that is called death metal because yeah. if you go out too much, then when it sounds a little bit like Spears, I remember when the album came out, people hated it. Now they think it's cult, but it, that came a little bit too late because I was not making money then. People dropped me, the, the record company dropped me, um, and you know, th th this stuff is really happening to somebody, you know. And, and it's like, okay, you're trying to progress, but if it's too much out of the box, uh, it becomes un unsellable, you yeah. know. And so it's that it's difficult to have that that balance between progression and not stagnation, but you know, to, to just keep keeping true to yeah, to keep keeping the core. And uh, with with hey Dion, we just went back to that core, and uh, with the knowledge that we have now. Like, yeah, and another thing is like, you know, I'm. I've been a guitar player since I was four. I would be practicing when I was younger for eight hours a day. You know, my friends would go outside and play, and I'll I would be just trying to find new ways of making chords, doing runs and leads and stuff like that. So uh, it's difficult to to keep that same. Um, Feeling you know, when you had when you were younger than me now because I'm such a I hope so I'm a better musician now and a better guitar player so I can't play those leads exactly like I did them back then because I have more knowledge so it's like it's it's like okay you go back on bike on your bike with the two wheels with the two side wheels yeah, yeah. no you, now you're you're able to bike you know so get rid of those little wheels. So I don't want to go back there, and, and uh, it's a challenge, um, but I can't seem to, to do that. I mean, obviously I can. I mean, I can play all my material, but somehow it's, it, it gets, it needs to be interesting for me as well. I'm always yeah. trying to find new ways to, to express myself within that, within the range of the, the, the rules of pestilence. Yeah. Um, it's also the first album for a while, I think since Resurrection Carver, that um, Patrick, I'm probably gonna say his name wrong, Roots of Mike. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, he did that right. <laughs> yeah. uh, it's, uh, but it's the first time for a while that he's not um, played on, I believe. Well, yeah, um, he did. He did Resurrection. He came back for Resurrection. Yeah. He did uh, Doctrine and he did Obsidio. Yeah. And uh, he, he's not on Hades. Yeah. And. Uh, for, you know he's he's getting he's getting older and he's got his regular job. He had some uh, minor setbacks and now he's he's getting he's getting a, you know he's a little bit ill, so he just doesn't have the energy anymore. And um, you know we discussed it and he's fine with it. You know for me to continue, I mean I dedicated the album AD onto him and uh, he loved it. So so we're good friends and no hard feelings whatsoever. Good. That's He's been by my side for the longest time, you know, and now I'm working with other people. I've always find it intriguing and interesting to have other people play my music and see what their input is to it. So it might give me a different view on, on my own music and a different angle. And um, these guys uh, uh, happen to be three Romanian guys, so... Oh, okay. So, um, I mean, they're very good at what they do. I mean, my drummer is probably one of the best drummers out there. Not very well known, but the, the, the insiders, like the real, really good drummers, like Derek Roddy, they know who this fucker is. Yeah. So that means that this guy is really, really good. And he can play jazz, he can play rock, he can play pretty much anything. Uh, so effortless. And that's that's the people I like to hang out with, people that have have knowledge about their instrument so they can take lessons to a higher plane. Yeah, I mean, it makes it interesting for you because you're being challenged as well. Yes, it? definitely. Yeah, because I'm the oldest. <laughs> yeah, the, my, my new bass player is 22, then, I, then you have uh, the, the drummer is thir 32, then, yeah. then Colleen is 42, and I'm almost 52. <laughs> so there you have it. 52, you look bad. Yeah. He's younger than me. Well, <laughs> you, do you drink? You smoke? No. You don't drink either? Well, that's good. That's a good start, right? It's something. But you don't work out. You don't go to the gym. I work out and I eat too much kebabs. Yeah. Well, so there you go. A lot of carbs. A lot of carbs. Exactly. You're not working out. It's <laughs> a little fat bloated. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's also the 30 year anniversary of consuming impulses. Yes. There's a rumor going around. I don't know if it's true that you're playing the album 
your food tonight. No, we are playing the album. Oh, you are playing? Yes, the album. yes, we are. Yeah, we have been playing it uh, ever since the first show. Okay, uh, we've been playing the album in full. Okay, cool. And I think that the the, the fans deserve it uh, because it's their thirtieth anniversary. So you have to play the whole album. I yeah. think. Yeah. You know, and we even pl uh, play chrono uh, chrono uh, chronologically in, in that same order. As if you would put on the album, so it's like okay, you start with dehydrated, go to process of suffocation, it was suspended animation. So it's like the whole journey from when you were younger. Yeah. It's happening now. Well, what's cool as well is uh, um, I noticed at the merch table you're selling the album, and, uh, not just on CD but cassette, and there's consuming impulse T-shirts with um, both artworks on there. Yes. Um, so it's great. I mean, because there'll be younger people in here. Yeah, definitely. Haven't heard the album. Haven't got the album. So you yeah. have to experience that. Well, the, the thing is that you know, uh, since uh, time, the time span that we like, uh, we grew up and we got famous with the band uh, after the '80s and the '90s. Uh, like I said, there's so many bands coming out, and all these young kids they don't know the the old school death metal where everything came. It was origin originated from, you know. Yeah. Uh, you know, like the like possessed. They were the first ones out there, not death, but possessed. Yeah. And. Um, I have to stress that out because Jeff is, you know, he's the yeah. well, originator. It's, it's like um, a couple of months I'm going to go to Grasshopper again and uh, Possessed are playing on the Sunday and I'm so excited. But every time I tell someone, Possessed, no, you don't, don't know. Right. Like, that's the original death metal band. Right, so, and then and then Chuck came and then, you know, uh, we, we were the European answer to that. So it's always like, a, there was always movement, you know, and, yeah. and within a little circle. I mean, you had all these bands like Obituary, Morbid Angel. They were in there too as well, the, the, the Florida yeah. style and everything. That's why we recorded Testimony of the Ancients there, because we wanted to be a part of that that whole movement that was so special back then. But now it's like everybody's using Pro Tools and, and, and everybody's a producer and everybody's recording and this and that. And then, well, a lot of the real knowledge of having of owning a studio and paying your dues it's not there anymore yeah so those it's just not that special anymore so that's kind of sad that it's this way but like i said that that's just a sign of the times the technology you can't get rid of anymore i think it dilutes like a local scene as well when everyone's doing it at home then yeah not too into going out and creating a buzz like even if you just want to play local, you have to have a demo. Well, well, look, look at this. You know, everybody's like, uh, everybody's like more self-absorbed, yeah. and only, you know, your little social media platforms where you just like, you know, people don't even relate anymore. They, uh, yeah, I have conversation. I have friends. Yeah, they're playing fucking black ops with the with the headphones on, and then they talk to each other. Yeah. Like my son. He sends me a WhatsApp and he's in the same fucking room with me. So I'm like, come on, dude, you know, you're here. You just talk to me, you know. And of course, they're very excited, you know. But uh, you know, but but you know, they don't. Not, they don't. They don't even realize yeah. who I am actually. When because when they see the older picture with the long hair, it's like man, you look like a fucking hippie, man. What is this, you know? Yeah. So they don't have that. That's where it comes from, that's not. Yeah, but they don't. They don't realize that anymore. They, 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 they're so caught up in the technology thing. I mean, they're doing stuff with, uh, with their laptop that I have never seen in my life before, so that makes me feel a little bit old. Yeah. Uh, but yet, you know, my oldest comes to me like, uh, he wants to start playing guitar, and then I have a little bit of hope that maybe they can continue pestles, you know? Yeah. But no, no, he likes Red Hot Chili Peppers and all that stuff, so forget about it, man. Red Hot <laughs> Chili Pestilence. Yeah, that's, that's it. <laughs> Um, just as a uh, little aside, um, I was wondering, has Roadrunner paid you yet or shown any intention to pay you yet? Well, Roadrunner is no longer. Are they not? No, they, they are swallowed up by Universal. Yeah. And of course, there's some shreds of evidence that there has been a Roadrunner. Yeah. Uh, but they're still withholding uh, royalties from years and 20 years or something like that. And first it was. Seven hundred dollars, then it was seven thousand dollars, and now I don't know what the figures are. But I, I the whole trying to get the money is like uh, you have to get the lawyers, and those people live in the states, and they're gonna, you know, try to worm their ways in 
So no. Yeah, you'll end up spending yeah. more money. Yeah, end up spending more money and then you don't know. So I'm like, um, I want to forget about that and yeah. uh, just just move forward. Just you know, keep on touring and then playing, coming up with new music for a new album. Absolutely. And that's pretty much it. Cool. Well, um, it's gonna be. This is my first time seeing Peston, so I'm really excited because is that speaking of Grasshoppers, ten years ago now, I really wanted to see you guys. I was on crutches. Oh, and I couldn't make it in time. That's too bad. I remember that was a that was a sick show, by the way. Yeah. It was Tony Choi on bass, and we yeah. had um, Peter Wilby were on drums, and it sounded awesome. I bet it did, man. Yeah, yeah that good. was that was really nice. We we're playing in the tent, of course, and yeah. we should have been playing, you know, on the bigger stage where Soul Flies playing and stuff like that. I'm like, okay, you know, maybe maybe the next year, and then. It's always, and there's also policies, you know, there's politics going on with that, you know, well, you can't play this festival if you do this, and then, you know, all these all these things, uh, you know, and you have to network as well. And it becomes more of a network thing than the actual bands, yeah. you know. Not so much a communal spirit as, right. as a uh, business, basically. That's it. Yeah. Well, I was so pissed off, man. I got there. All oh, Pestons had just finished. Papa Roach had just started. Man. Yeah. Fuck! <laughs> Fuck Papa Roach already. Yeah. 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 yeah, that's how um, it works. Well, dude, thank you so much for taking the time to speak to me. I really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you.